sometimes it takes me a little while to catch on. <laughs> and what do I mean by that? Well, funny you should ask. Okay, maybe you didn't ask. But, you see, when you are what Chuck Smith used to say, in the center of God's will, meaning that God's will is always accomplished. There's always going to be God doing what he chooses to do, irregardless of what our choices are. Because you see, he already knows what our choices are. He knows if you're going to turn to the left, to the right, whether you're going to sit down on your hiney and do nothing, or whether you're going to stand up and give an accounting for the life that you live before him, because one day you will. But he already knows you better than you know you. He knows everything. Now, people don't like to admit that because, you see, when you can admit someone is bigger than you are, smarter than you are, and really is in control of everything, it kind of takes you, as being the center of the world, out of the picture. As a matter of fact, it kind of crucifies yourself from himself because, quite frankly, you're not the most important ingredient in the equation. He is. Oh well, some people have to learn that the hard way. And that's kind of why, you know, it's fascinating to watch how we all gyrate and ovulate and circumvent, you know, or try to circumvent God in what He wants to do with us. So, sometimes it takes me a little while to catch on with the program of what he's doing and wanting me to do than what I'm doing and I want to do. Recently, that meant like I wanted to post all these wonderful, you know, devotionals and Bible studies by all these great men of God, you know, that I grew up with, you know, because I always figured, man, if these people, you know, this generation, the younger ones, you know, had all the the spoiled, rotten kind of teachings that I had, which was like Chuck Smith and Greg Laurie and Mike McIntosh and Chuck Missler and Billy Graham and, you know, all these guys, A.W. Tozer and, you know, Oswald Chambers and all this stuff. Well, then they would catch on and they'd be like, you know, wow, super smart, you know, geniuses, so to speak. You know, they'd be out there and up there and all over. Only problem is God said, no, don't do that. He said, I want you to talk about you. Me. Oh, okay. About my relationship in sharing Jesus intimately and personally in a way that he relates to me and I relate to him. And that is what he's called me to do. So in utmost, my utmost for his highest, files while chambers, it always gets interesting because you can't live it. <laughs> Whenever chambers says something, you'll find that, guess what? You ain't going to do it. You're not going to come close to it. He's going to take you through it. And one way or another, it's going to bust you. Because anybody I've ever met, I tell them, look, try to get through Chambers in one year through reading his devotionals. You're either going to be taken in a rapture directly to God like Enoch. Or you're going to give up halfway through. Which, obviously, because Vidivo never has made it all the way through, we haven't done it either. One of the great things about Chambers was that God used him at a time when he was probably as farthest away from outside influences as possibly could be. If I recall my history right, which I could be wrong, so I better preface myself to say, I could be wrong on this, but I think the time he wrote utmost was during his time in prison. Was that he wrote, if I remember right, this devotional or this type of writings that were used for his devotional during his imprisonment for being a Christian. So, are you listening to God? That's a good question. Are you? I know today I had to come to that conclusion that I wasn't until I went back to recording videos. Then said Moses, you speak with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. Exodus 20:19. We don't consciously and deliberately disobey God. We simply don't listen to Him. God has given His commands to us, but we pay no attention to them. Not because of willful obedience, but because we do not truly love and respect Him. If you love me, keep my commandments. John 14, 15. Once we realize we have constantly been showing disrespect to God, we will be filled with shame and humiliation for ignoring Him. That's me. You see, 
I wanted so much so to go out there and keep posting all these thousands of devotionals like I used to do. I used to post, oh, I don't know, I'd get up like five in the morning and go till you know, midnight and just keep posting, 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 you know. Some of it video, some of it my own writing, some of it things that I've done in the past and relate, you know, to Jesus and have related to him by way of the Holy Spirit giving me remembrance and causing me to share those things and intimately relate them to you, you know, in a personal way. But a lot of it, a lot of it had to do with a lot of other people's works that, you know, they've, they've accomplished and, you know, it's out there for the web to be seen and obviously presented. But I was able to do it in a way that a lot of other people couldn't do. And so I thought, well, you know, social media, let's just blast it and cast it and let it go out there and accomplish its purpose. But you see, that's good when God tells you to do it. But if God hasn't told you to do it, shut up. <laughs> Stop it. Quit doing what you're doing. In other words, God wants me to do video. Now, I personally like that because I get to share Jesus in a personal and intimate way. It's my personal relationship. There is no debating about whether or not it's my relationship. Hey, it is. And I do relate to people the opportunities that they have while watching to understand and comprehend that you two, or YouTube, so to speak, could hear God speak directly instead of listening to me and understanding how I've heard God speak to me directly. Now, some people argue about that and they can debate it and they can go, you know, with this stupid statement. I always hear people say, uh, we're just going to agree to disagree agreeably. No, we're not. I'm going to tell you the facts that I've proven and you can disagree all you want to, but we're not going to agree to disagree. No way, man. I'm telling you the truth. <laughs> you can go somewhere else and argue about whether you agree to disagree because, frankly, that's dumb. What am I going to agree on? That we disagree? I'm not going to agree on that. Because once you've learned and you have comprehension by way of the Holy Spirit inspiring you, then you don't disagree anymore. You've learned enough to comprehend what is the riches of the fathom of the depths and the glorious grace that God has given you from the heights to the depths and all the things in between that God has prepared for them that love them and are called according to his purposes. So you see, I don't agree to disagree. I agree to disagree with you, period. And I will disagree when it's wrong. Because no, I don't agree with you, period. I just say, look, this is the facts. You know, If you understand the facts, great. If not, hey, go find out. Go check it out. Because that's the thing that God makes me do. And that's why I read things like Chambers, like he said today. Are you listening to God? Are you hearing his voice? Are you doing the things he said to do? Because he said, as it says right here in John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. You speak with us, but let not God speak with us. You know, that's what the children of Israel did to Moses. They did not want, because they knew they were in sin, they did not want to hear God speak to them directly. And that's kind of the problem maybe you have. I never really got that choice because God spoke to me pretty direct pretty soon in my Christian walk and I kind of had that issue that, oh great, now that I've heard him speak, now what do I do? I can't deny that he exists. But you see, as long as you can pretend that God doesn't speak to you, as long as you can contend that, oh, he speaks through pastors or he speaks through the word, as long as you make it circumstantial, you can always manipulate how God speaks to you. But you see, there's a problem here. You're manipulating how God speaks to you, not whether or not he is. Because deep down inside, just like the children of Israel at the mountain of Sinai with Moses, you know and you're scared to death that God will speak to you. And most of you, like my sister, would say, uh-uh, don't tell me, God, what you got to say. You tell someone else to tell me because you scare me. And you know, that's really ignorance of God because God loves you. I mean, he gave his son. I mean, that's enough, isn't it, to prove his love? But some people are terrified because of their own sinfulness or their own guilt or whatever it is that they just don't have a proper knowledge of who the Father is and how much he loves them. And that's why Jesus came, because one of the things Jesus kept doing over and over and over and over and over again was saying, look, I love you, and that's obvious because I'm here and you see me, but the Father loves you even more so than I do. You can do greater works than I do. You could with the Father's help, of course, 
do much more than I have done with the Holy Spirit inside you. But you see, people in Moses' day did not want to come near to God, where Moses just went running up the mountain, and Joshua followed him halfway up. So part of what people are doing today, I have to confront them. I have to say at times, you know, hey look, you can tell me theologically you're hermeneutic, you're homiletic, you're dogmatic, you know, and all the dogmas and theorems and all those things that all these guys that go to schools of theology, I could argue with and I could win the debate in the long run. It would take a few days, but I can prove it. You know, it doesn't have I don't have a problem with that. I can keep going and going and going and work premise upon premise and line upon line and precept upon precept where we can prove what is you know, the fullness of the Godhead and the grace that God has given as far as the relationship of a man and God is concerned as far as creator and creation in that he is designated unto themselves his own way of relating to that creation the way that he chooses according to the spirit of God that is within the person that he gives and uses according to his own will as he designates that person to receive or not to receive according to the freedom of choice as well as the planning of God which totally destroys free will and predestination, but causes all of us to come to the realization that God is bigger than we are and we're not so smart. Got it? No? Okay. Well, that's fine. The point being is this. Who cares? Are you hearing from God? And the realization is, if you're not, it's because you don't want to. If you love Him, you want to. If you're not hearing from Him, Jesus said, My sheep hear my voice and they know me, they will not follow the voice of another. You need to find out what God has to say to numero uno, but you. Yeah, really, because I did. And today I found out I was doing the wrong thing. I was heading the wrong direction. I was posting and doing things that were taking so much of my time. Whew, I'd sit down at the end of the day and go, I'm whipped. I can't even get to bed. I'm so tired. I'm so burned out. I'm so, Lord, Christians don't burn out if they're doing it in the center of your will, as Chuck Smith used to say. So you see, I discovered I needed to get back to my center. Um, no, not that kind of center. The fulcrum of a triangle is right here, and you put the beam across the medium so that the scales are a just scale so that they balance out equally. That's the center of God's will, when you are doing exactly what God told you to do. And what has he told you to do? One of them is to keep his commandments. Now, you have to figure out what his commandments to you are, because every person, pardon me, has a learning curve. We show how little love we have for our God by preferring to listen to his servants rather than to him. We like to listen to personal testimonies. Oh, of course. But we don't want God himself to speak to us. Oh, no. We want to find someone who's been where we've been done what we've done, but don't let God speak to us. Why are we so terrified for God to speak to us? It is because we know that when God speaks, we must either do what he says or asks us, or tell him we will not obey. And that's the bottom line. The fact is, you're in disobedience or obedience when God speaks to you. Big challenge. You could pretend, like I said, that God works only through circumstances. You could contend that somehow God works through only the pastor or the priest or the pope or somebody else that you want to put in front of you and God. You can extend grace to the point where you could say, well, you know, it's, it all works out somehow in the great kismet of all things, you know, and the, the, the providence of God takes care of me, you know, and I just live by grace and, you know, I just hope for the best and do my best and pray that it's blessed, you know, kind of skating around, you know, skating on thin ice. You could do that. But it is simply one of God's servants speaking to us. We feel obedience is optional, not imperative. You see, God never said that, did he? Grace is given to you to know God. But once you know God, guess what? God starts speaking to you and then you find yourself in obedience or disobedience. We respond by saying, well, that's your idea of God. It's not my idea. I don't believe that, so it's not true. I agree to disagree with you. Oh, yeah. Even though I don't deny that what you said is probably God's truth, especially if it's in the Bible, that might be true, but that was for then, not now. That's for those guys, not me. I, I'm not there yet. I haven't learned enough. 
I haven't come to the place of hearing his voice. And yet, Jesus said, today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as it says in the provocation. So, why don't we hear God's voice? Hardened heart? Don't want to hear? Don't want to do? The reality is those things that we have made of ourselves, to ourselves, pretending that God is not real. God's alive. He's surely not dead. He's working on the inside, yes, like the song says, but he's also working on the outside, speaking to you direct. He's talking to you right now. He's speaking to you and saying, hey, I'm talking. Are you listening? And that's the reality. Are you? Are you listening to God today? Are you doing what he says to do? Period. Not reading it, not believing it, not putting somebody else's name in front of it, or putting some commentary around it, and trying to pretend or contend or get whatever you want to extend your way somehow around the fact that you need to hear God speak to you. You need to know that God told you and you need to be able to say to yourself, yeah, but I'm not going to do it. Because that's an honest man. God can deal with someone who says, I'm disobeying and I'm disobedient. I need to repent. I need to change my ways. But today, I'll admit, I know what God told me to do but I won't do it. Now that man God can work with. The man who says God doesn't speak is a liar and the truth is not in him. The man who says that God can't do something is a liar and the truth is not in him. The man who says that God cannot doesn't have the God of Jesus Christ. Doesn't have our Father who art in heaven as his God. He has put himself and his own interpretation into that slot that he's designated as being quote unquote God. Am I constantly humiliating God by ignoring Him while He lovingly continues to treat me as His child? Once I finally do hear Him, the humiliation I have heaped on Him returns to me. My response then becomes, Lord, why was I so insensitive and obstinate? This is always a result of once we hear God, but our real delight in finally hearing Him is tempered with the shame we feel for having taken so long to do so. For me, I thank God that today I stopped doing all those other things, posting and ministry work, and started doing what God told me to do. For you, I have no idea what you may do. I don't have a concept or even a question mark as to what you'll probably do. Because if you're like every other human being I know, you're going to run off with the children of Israel and say, hey, I don't want to hear what God has to say. I don't want to hear God speak to me direct. I want to hear what you have to say. I want to go find me pastors and teachers and elders and deacons and all those people with itching ears that are willing to tell me what I want to hear or tell me in a nice way what God might say. Should it be that, oh, it fits my circumstances. I got news for you. God makes you fit his circumstances. It doesn't work the other way around. You see, that's the way it works you are going to find yourself in a direct relationship of either obedience or disobedience with the Almighty God. That's why He wants the utmost from you. And you'll find out that if you give it, you will rise up to the highest potential that God has ever created for man to be. And that is to be like the Son of God.